the book of Yovelim, Jubilees, chapter 35. And in the first year of the first week of the 45th Jubilee, Rivka called Yaakov her son and commanded him regarding his father and regarding his brother that he should honor them all the days of his life. And Yaakov said, I will do everything as you have commanded me, for this thing will be honor and greatness to me and righteousness before Yahweh, that I should honor them. And you too, mother, for I know the time I was born until this day, all my deeds and all that is in my heart, that I always think good concerning all. And how should I not do this thing which you have commanded me, that I should honor my father and my brother? Tell me, mother, what perversity have you seen in me, and I shall turn away from it, and mercy will be upon me. And she said unto him, My son, I have not seen in you all my days any perverse, but only upright deeds. And yet I will tell you the truth, my son. I shall die this year, and I shall not survive this year in my life. For I have seen in a dream the day of my death that I should not live beyond a hundred and fifty-five years. And behold, I have completed all the days of my life, which I am to live. And Yaakov laughed at the words of his mother, because his mother had said unto him that she should die. And she was sitting opposite to him in possession of her strength. And she was not infirm in her strength, for she went in and out and saw, and her teeth were strong, and no ailment had touched her all the days of her life. And Yaakov said unto her, Blessed am I, mother, if my days approach the days of your life, and my strength remain with me thus as your strength. And you will not die, for you are jesting idly with me regarding your death. And she went in to Yitshak, and said unto him, One petition I make unto you. Make Esau... Swear that he will not injure Yaakov, nor put pressure, nor pursue him with enmity. For you know Esau's thoughts, that they are perverse from his youth, and there is no goodness in him, for he desires after your death to kill him. And you know all that he has done since the day Yaakov, his brother, went to Haran until this day how he has forsaken us with his whole heart and has done evil to us. Your flocks he has taken to himself and carried off all your possessions from before your face. And when we implored and besought him for what was our own, he did as a man who was taking pity on us. And he is bitter against you because you did bless Yaakov, your perfect and upright son. For there is no evil, but only goodness in him. And since he came from Haran unto this day, he has not robbed us of anything. For he brings us everything in its season always, and rejoices with all his heart when we take at his hands. And he blesses us, and has not parted from us since he came from Haran until this day. And he remains with us continually at home, honoring us. And Yitshak said unto her, I too know and see the deeds of Yaakov, who is with us, how that with all his heart he honors us. But I loved Esau formerly more than Yaakov, because he was the firstborn. But now I love Yaakov more than Esau, for he has done manifold evil deeds. And there is no righteousness in him, for all his ways are unrighteousness and violence, and there is no righteousness around him. And now my heart is troubled because of all his deeds, and neither he nor his seed is to be saved, for they are those who will be destroyed from the earth, and who will be rooted out from under Shamaim, for he has forsaken the Allahim of Abraham and gone after his women, and after their uncleanness, and after their error. 
he and his children. And you do bid me make him swear that he will not slay Yaakov his brother, even if he swears he will not abide by his oath, and he will not do good but evil only. But if he desires to slay Yaakov his brother into Yaakov's hands, will he be given, and he will not escape from his hands, for he will descend into his hands. And fear you, not on account of Yaakov, for the guardian of Yaakov is great and powerful and honored and praised more than the guardian of Esau. And Rivka sent and called Esau, and he came to her, and she said unto him, I have a petition, my son, to make unto you, and do you promise to do it, my son? And he said, I will do everything that you say unto me, and I will not refuse your petition. And she said unto him, I ask that the day, I ask you that the day I die, you will take me in and bury me near Sarah, your father's mother, and that you and Yaakov will love each other, and that neither will desire evil against the other, but mutual love only. And so ye will prosper, my sons, and be honored in the midst of the land, and no enemy will rejoice over you, and ye will be a blessing and a mercy in the eyes of all that love you. And he said, I will do all that you have told me, and I shall bury you on the day you die near Sarah, my father's mother, as you have desired, that her bones may be near your bones. And Yaakov, my brother also, I shall love above all flesh, for I have not a brother in all the earth, but him only. And this is no great merit for me, if I love him, for he is my brother, and we were sown together in your body, and together came we forth from your womb. And if I do not love my brother, whom shall I love? And I myself beg you to extort Yaakov concerning me and concerning my sons, for I know that he will assuredly be king over me and my sons. For on the day my father blessed him, he made him the higher and me the lower. And I swear unto you that I shall love him and not desire evil against him all the days of my life, but good only. And he swore unto her regarding all this matter. And she called Yaakov before the eyes of Esau, and gave him commandment according to the words which she had spoken to Esau. And she said, and he said, I shall do your pleasure, believe me, that no evil will proceed from me. Or out of or from my sons against Esau, and I shall be first in naught, save in love only. And they ate and drank, she and her sons that night, and she died, three jubilees, and one week, and one year old, on that night. And her two sons, Esau and Yaakov, buried her in the double cave near Sarah, their father's mother. Chapter 36 And in the sixth year of this week, Yitshak called his two sons, Esau and Yaakov, and they came to him. And he said unto them, My sons, I am going the way of my fathers to the eternal house where my fathers are. Wherefore bury me near Abraham my father in the double cave in the field of Ephron, the, the Chitti, where Abraham purchased a sepulchre to bury in in the sepulchre, which I dug for myself, there bury me. And this I command you, my sons, that ye practice righteousness and uprightness on the earth, so that Yahweh may bring upon you all that Yahweh said that he would do to the Abraham, to Abraham and to his seed. And love one another, my sons, your brothers, as a man who loves his own soul, and that each seek in what he may benefit his brother, and act together on the earth, and let them love each other as their own souls, 
and concerning the question of idols. I command and admonish you to reject them and hate them and love them not, for they are full of deception for those that worship them and for those that bow down to them. Remember ye, my sons, Yahweh, Alahayim of Avraham, your father, and how I too worshipped him and served him in righteousness and in joy, that he might multiply you and increase your seed as the stars of Shamayim in multitude and establish you on the earth as the plan of righteousness, which will not be rooted out until unto all the generations forever. And now I shall make you swear a great oath, for there is no oath which is greater than it, by the name glorious and honored and great and splendid and wonderful and mighty, which created the Shamaim oath and the earth, all things together that ye will fear him and worship him, and that each will love his brother with affection and righteousness, and that neither will desire evil against his brother from henceforth forever all the days of your life, so that ye may prosper in all your deeds and not be destroyed. And if either of you devises evil against his brother, know that from henceforth every one that devises evil against his brother shall fall into his hand and shall be rooted out out of the land of the living, and his seed shall be destroyed from under Shamayim. But on the day of turbulence and execration and in indignation and, ang and anger with flaming devouring fire, as he burnt Sedom, so likewise will he burn his land and his city and all that is his, and he shall be blotted out of the sefer of the discipline of the children of men and not be recorded in the sefer of life, but in that which is appointed to destruction. And he shall depart into eternal execration so that their condemnation may be always renewed in hate and in execration and in wrath and in torment and in indignation and in plagues and in disease forever. I say and testify to you, my sons, according to the judgment which shall come upon the man who wishes to injure his brother. And he divided all his possessions between the two on that day, and he gave the larger portion to him that was the firstborn, and the tower and all that was about it, and all that Abraham possessed at the well of the oath. And he said, this larger portion will I give to the firstborn. And Esau said, I have sold to Yaakov and given my birthright to Yaakov to let to him let it be given. And I have not a single word to say regarding it, for it is his. And Yitzhak said, May a blessing rest upon you, my sons, and upon your seed this day, for ye have given me rest, and my heart is not pained concerning the birthright, lest you should work wickedness on account of it. May al Alahayim bless the man that works righteousness in him and his seed forever. And he ended commanding them and blessing them, and they ate and drank together before him. And he rejoiced because there was one mind between them. And they went forth from him and rested that day and slept. And Yitzhak slept on his bed that day rejoicing. And he slept the eternal sleep and died 180 years old. He completed 25 weeks and five years. And his two sons Esau and Yaakov buried him. And Esau went to the land of Edom to the mountains of Seir and dwelt there. And Yaakov dwelt in the mountains of Chevron, in the tower of the land of the sojourning of his father Avraham. And he worshipped Yahweh with all his heart and according to the visible commands, according as he had divided the days of his generations. And Leah, his woman, died in the fourth year of the second week of the forty-fifth jubilee. And he buried her in the double cave near Rivka, his mother to the left 
of the grave of Sarah, his father's mother, and all her sons, and his sons came to mourn over Leah his woman with him, and to comfort him regarding her, for he was lamenting her, for he loved her exceedingly after Rachel, her sister, died, for she was perfect and upright in all her ways, and honored Yaakov, and all the days that she lived with him, he did not hear from her mouth a harsh word, for she was gentle and peaceable, and upright and honorable, and he remembered all her deeds which she had done during her life, and he lamented her exceedingly, for he loved her with all his heart and with all his soul. Chapter 37 And on the day that Yitshak, the father of Yaakov and Esau, died, the sons of Esau heard that Yitshak had given the portion of the elder to his younger son, Yaakov, and they were very angry. And they strove with their father, saying, Why is your father given Yaakov the portion of the elder and passed over you, although you were the elder? and Yaakov the younger. And he said unto them, Because I sold my birthright to Yaakov for a small mess of lentils, and on the day my father sent me to hunt and catch and bring him something that he should eat and bless me, he came with guile and brought my father food and drink, and my father blessed him and put me under his hand. And now our father has caused us to swear, me and him, that we shall not mutually devise evil either against his brother, and that we shall continue in love and peace, each with his brother, and not make our ways corrupt. And they said unto him, We shall not hearken unto you to make peace with him, for our strength is greater than his strength, and we are more powerful than he. We shall go against him, and stay him, and destroy him and his sons. And if you will not go with us, we shall do hurt to you also. And now hearken unto us. Let us send to Aram and Pelisheteth and Moab and Ammon, and let us choose for ourselves chosen men who are ardent for battle, and let us go against him and do battle with him, and let us exterminate him from the earth before he grows strong. And their father said unto them, Do not go, and do not make war with him, lest ye fall before him. And they said unto him, This too is exactly your mode of action, from your youth until this day, and you are putting your neck under his yoke. We shall not hearken to these words. And they sent to Aram, and to Aduram, to the friend of their father, and they hired along with them one thousand fighting men, chosen men of war. And there came from them Moab, and from the children of Ammon, those who were hired, one thousand chosen men, and from Pelishetit, one thousand chosen men of war, and from Edom, and from the Churim, one thousand chosen fighting men, and from the Kittim, mighty men of war. And they said unto their father, Go forth with them, and lead them, else we shall slay you. And he was filled with wrath and indignation on seeing that his sons were forcing him to go before them, to lead them against Yaakov his brother. But afterward he remembered all the evil which lay hidden in his heart against Yaakov his brother, and he remembered not the oath which he had sworn to his father and to his mother, that he would devise no evil all his days against Yaakov, his brother. And notwithstanding all this, Yaakov knew not that they were coming against him to battle, and he was mourning for Leah, his woman, until they approached very near to the tower with four thousand warriors and chosen men of war. And the men of Chevron sent to him, saying, Behold, your brother has come against you to fight you with four thousand girt with the sword, and they carry shields and weapons, for they loved Yaakov more than Esau. So they told him, for Yaakov was a more liberal and merciful man than Esau. But Yaakov would not believe 
until they came very near to the tower. And he closed the gates of the tower, and he stood on the bat battlements and spoke to his brother Esau, and said, Noble is the comfort wherewith you have come to comfort me, for my woman who ha has died. Is this the oath that you did swear to your father and again to your mother before they died? You have broken the oath, and on the moment that you did swear to your father, you were condemned. And then Esau answered and said unto him, Neither the children of men nor the beasts of the earth have any oath of righteousness, which in swearing they have sworn an oath valid for ever. But every day they devise evil one against another, and how each slay his adversary and foe. And you do hate me and my children forever, and there is no observing the tie of brotherhood with you, Hear these words which I declare unto you. If the boar can change its skin and make its bristles as soft as wool, or if it can cause horns to sprout forth on its head like the horns of a stag or of a sheep, then will I observe the tie of brotherhood with you. And if the breasts separated themselves from their mother, for you have not been a brother to me, and if the wolves make peace with the lambs, so as not to devour or do them violence, and if their hearts are towards them for good, then there shall be peace in my heart towards you. And if the lion becomes the friend of the ox and makes peace with him, and if he is bound under one yoke with him and plows with him, then I will make peace with you. And when the raven becomes white as the Raza, then know that I have loved you and shall make peace with you. You shall be rooted out, and your sons shall be rooted out, and there shall be no peace for you. And when Yaakov saw that he was so evilly disposed towards him with his heart and with all his soul as to slay him, and that he come springing like the wild boar, which comes upon the spear that pierces and kills it, and recoils not from it. Then he spoke to his own and to his servants that they should attack him and all his companions. Chapter 38 And after that Yehuda spoke to Yaakov his father and said unto him, Bend your bow, father, and send forth your arrows and cast down the adversary and slay the enemy. And may you have the power, for we shall not slay your brother, for he is such as you, and he is like you. Let us give him this honor. Then Yaakov bent his bow and sent forth the arrow and struck Esau, his brother, on his right breast and slew him. And again he sent forth an arrow and struck Adaran, the Aramee, on the left breast and drove him backward and slew him. And then went forth the sons of Yaakov and, they, and their servants dividing themselves into companies on the four sides of the tower. And yet Huda went forth in front, and Naphtali and Gad with him, and fifty servants with him on the south side of the tower, and they slew all they found before them, and not one individual of them escaped. And Levi and Dan and Asher went forth on the east side of the tower, and fifty men with them, and they slew the fighting men of Moab and Ammon, and Reuven and Issachar and Zebulun went forth on the north side of the tower, and fifty men with them, and they slew the fighting men of the Pelishatim. And Shimon and Benjamin and Shanach, Reuven's son, went forth on the west side of the tower, and fifty men with them, and they slew Edom, they slew of Edom, and of the Cheorium four hundred men, stout warriors, and six hundred fled, and four of the sons of Esau fled with them, and left their father lying slain, as he had fallen on the hill which is in Adoram. And the sons of Yaakov pursued after them to the mountain of Seir, and Yaakov buried his brother on the hill which is in Adoram, and he returned to his house. And the sons of Yaakov pressed hard upon the sons of Esau 
in the mountains of Seir and bowed their necks so that they became servants of the sons of Yaakov. And they sent to their father to inquire whether they should make peace with them or slay them. And Yaakov sent word to his sons that they should make peace. And they made peace with them and placed the yoke of servitude upon them so that they paid tribute to Yaakov and his sons always. And they continued to pay tribute to Yaakov until the day that he went down into Mizraim. And the sons of Edom have not got free of the yoke of servitude which the twelve sons of Yaakov had imposed on them until this day. And these are the kings that reigned in Edom before they, there reigned any king over the children of Yasharal unto this day in the land of Edom. And Balak, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Danabah. And Balak died, and Yo Yovav, the son of Zarak of Batra, reigned in his stead. And Yovav died, and Chusham of the land of Taman reigned in his stead. And Chusham died, and Adath, the son of Barad, who slew Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Aviith, and Adath died, and Salman from Amask, Amaska reigned in his stead. And Salman died, and Shaul of Rahavoth by the river reigned in his stead. And Shaul died, and Baaluman, the son of Akbor, reigned in his stead and Baal Anun or Baal Anan the son of Akbor died and Adath reigned in his stead and the name of his woman was Meabith the daughter of Matarat the daughter of Methbasavad these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom.